Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we are back in the kitchen and I'm going to show you how I make my same day pizza dough. Now having a pizza dough that is ready the same day that you plan to make pizza is really exciting because I don't know about you but I usually decide to make pizza on the day and I'd like to make it a few hours later and finding a recipe that is suitable for that can be quite tricky. They all kind of require a few hours where you're at least letting the dough rise and be ready for you later on when you are ready to make a pizza. Now you're always going to have to give a few hours for that dough to rise, but this recipe is nice because you just need a couple of hours. You could be mixing the dough at 10 a.m. in the morning and bake your pizza at 4 p.m. that evening. So as long as you're thinking about making a pizza earlier on in the day, this pizza dough will work for you and you'll be able to have an evening filled with some pizza making. You want to start by mixing the dough. I mix my water and flour together and let that autolyze for 20 to 30 minutes. There's a whole science behind the autolyze process where the flour and the water is first mixed together and let sit for a while. And what I can say from past experience is that this process is really necessary because I have also left this out and seen a difference in my baking and I've also overdone this process and left it for much longer than 30 minutes and it have bad effects on the other end. So 20 to 30 minutes, let your flour and your water mix together and then come back and do the next steps. Now to make this recipe, you wanna start by getting the yeast ready. I mix a little bit of water with my yeast and start getting that activated. Mix in your salt and mix in your yeast. I just swish it up a little bit, the yeast, before I add it with my finger. Once I feel like it has had a really good mix, I usually cover my bowl with a tea towel and then I'll come back to it in about a half an hour or an hour and I'll just do the big fold. Now they refer to this as the fold because you just let the dough rest a little bit while all the ingredients are incorporated and now that fold is just to once off pull and fold, pull and fold the dough all the way around and continue adding and helping those gluten structures form and help the dough give its elasticity that it's trying to accomplish. This recipe only needs one fold, so I'll usually do it between 30 minutes and one hour after I've mixed the dough. And then I'm gonna leave this dough to sit out until later this afternoon, about six hours, or until the dough has doubled in size, which is important to know because depending on what season you're making this in, if the temperatures are really hot, this may happen much quicker than in the winter when it's cooler. It all depends. So keep an eye on it. Once the dough has doubled in size, roughly six hours later, it is time to divide the dough into the pizza balls. Now we divide the pizza dough into these little balls because they're now gonna even tighten more as we divide and shape these little dough balls so that later on when we use them, they have really firmed up and they are ready to bake really nice pizza crusts. So how I do that is I liberally flour my countertop and then I flour my hands and the part of the bowl where the dough is gonna roll out of very gently, I help the dough ease onto the countertop. Do this carefully because there's a lot of gases and gluten structures already built up in this mix and you wanna preserve that as much as possible. So help the dough out of your container with your hands very carefully. And once it's on your countertop, divide it into six equal parts. Depending on how thick you want your pizza dough to be, I find that this works really well with six pizza balls. Once you have divided your dough, you're gonna again Pull and fold and pull and fold to make these little tiny balls which I am then going to plop onto a different part of my counter that is not floured and start gently pulling down and tightening this ball. So it will make you feel really good as you pull this dough down, twist it a quarter and then pull it down again, twist it another quarter and the whole time this is just tightening up this little ball and holding in those gluten structures and gases into what is now rising and preparing itself to be a really good pizza crust.
all of the pizza dough, let it sit on your countertop for about 30 minutes, and then put it back in the fridge. And the reason why the fridge is good is because later, when you're trying to shape your pizzas, it'll help you not to tear the pizza dough and then have floppy pizza crust. <laughs> but instead, it'll really hold up its end and help you be able to shape really nice pizza. Now, while that's all going on, you can start preparing your pizza sauce. Now, pizza sauce, for me, is the make or break it in a pizza. The tastefulness of the pizza sauce is all going to be dependent on what kind of tomatoes you use and the quality of tomatoes you use. There are specific tomatoes that are perfectly for pizza dough, and this can of pizza tomatoes really makes all of the difference. They are full, they are rich in flavor, almost like creamy, stiff sauce. I don't know, I can't even explain it to you, but if you can find any kind of tomatoes in a can from Italy, that is going to be your go-to. Now there are some tomatoes that we're growing in the garden this year and I'm testing them to see if they're going to be able to hold up to these tomatoes, but I don't have the answer to that yet, so you'll have to check back on the channel later. But for now, this brand of tomatoes really does the trick. And I start by straining them out in my sink in another bowl. It's always good to keep, you know, as much of the sauce. You could use that later for a kind of soup or some other kind of dish. But strain out the tomato so that you're just working with the flesh of the tomato. Leave that in your sink and continue on with the rest of the recipe so long. In my food blender, I'm going to combine garlic, olive oil, oregano, and chili flakes with some salt and blend that together. And then once my tomatoes have strained long enough, I will add that into the blender and mix it in with those ingredients. And this is a delicious sauce. It doesn't take much effort and it's totally the win sauce for me. got my sauce ready, my dough is busy proofing, now I'm just setting up my pizza station so that we're all ready to go once we are ready to bake these pizzas. So now my in-laws came over for the evening so we set this all up together and my mom-in-law and I started baking these pizzas when it was just around time for dinner. Now you want to 
preheat your oven with your pizza stones in the oven. It makes a big difference to bake your pizza on a pizza stone, so if you don't already have one, I just got these from a thrift store. Keep your eye on it. They come in and out of thrift stores now and then, so I picked up these two from a thrift store and they have taken up our pizza game, so get a pizza stone. You also want your oven to be super, super hot. I'm going to say a number and you may think this is crazy, but 525 degrees Fahrenheit is what I set my oven at. And I moved my rack to the very top. Now, that blows most people's minds because that is super hot and you're putting your pizza right up close to the grill of the oven. But this is exactly what, we, what you want for a pizza. You want it to go quick and you want it to sear nicely at the top so that you have a nice brown toasty layer. And that is long enough for this pizza to really come into full fruition of what it's meant to be. Just five, six, seven-ish minutes, keep an eye on it, because of course your oven is super hot. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you like content like this, or you can find me out in the garden, or out on a trip somewhere, either camping or on a boat, if that all interests you, why don't you subscribe and stick around and catch some of my upcoming videos. Alright, see ya, bye.